Oh, well, good morning. It's, uh, uh, what time is it? Uh, 20, 25 to 8 on, uh, on Dovedale Day. And uh, I, uh, I had a good sleep. And uh, it's overcast. Uh, not a particularly nice looking day, but, well, it's either got to be the day or not at all because tomorrow I'm scheduled to go on up to my, see my sister who lives in a place called Bailden near Shipley which is not far from Bradford uh, I'll leave Monty sleeping a bit longer oh, that's better, I'm washed, dressed and uh, I'm having my second cup of tea here No, it's a really nice looking day. Slight breeze, not too cold. I think I will put something on top afterwards, but for the moment, great. Have this and then uh, breakfast. So, first breakfast for 2022 in Gwendolyn. 2020, two little ducks if you play bingo. And I'm having bacon and baked beans which I'm boiling in the can in water because I don't want to do messy washing up and an egg and I was hoping to have mushrooms but unfortunately they've gone off and all that lot will go on a piece of wholemeal brown bread with butter and there we are how does that look lovely oh that was really good there's just one one bean that I couldn't manage right now, but I'll save it for later. Uh, oh, that was really lovely. Must get on the road now. Oh, there's a sudden change. When I sat down for breakfast, the sun was shining, and now it's raining. I then just finished breakfast. Anyway, we'll go off to Dovedale and see what we find. Well, never mind the rain. It's uh, to Dubdale, 27 minutes, 15 miles, so uh, we'll get going. We're almost to here now, we've just got to get down the bottom of that hill, and the dale is uh, this side of that uh, cliff there. So on down to the car park, and we'll take a little walk. The rain's died down a little bit, but it's still spitting. And the people up there, back there, have told me that it's flooded just up here and you can't get through. But they very kindly said, just walk as far as you can. And uh, how long are you going to be here? I said, well, not more than an hour, if that. And they said, oh, well, don't worry about paying. for the moment so I said okay well if I stop too long I'll pay you when I get back <laughs> it is fair enough and it belongs to the National Trust and they, um, my brother Gerald is a, a ranger for the National Trust at one of their properties Lime Park the river is well swollen and running fast. I'll take a little walk over that bridge there and look up the valley. The dale. There we have it. There we have it looking up the dale. We did a lovely walk up there, which I've done a long, long time ago. <laughs> that was a terrible shame. With that sunshine this morning, and now it started to rain really sharp, so I had to give up and come back. And uh, we had a laugh with the, the ranger there from the National Trust. <laughs> I said, if we carry on like this with storms, and they're alphabetically named, we're going to get to Zorms, Storm Zulu soon. And he said, yeah, we might make that till April. 
Oh dear, horrible. I've stopped at a place called Ireland. Uh, there's a cross which was uh, erected by this chap uh, who was a Mr. Russell uh, to commemorate his wife who died in 1841. And there is the cross. It's certainly a pretty little hamlet. But the reason I stopped here is I was supposed to go down that road there. But look, and all they tell you is find alternative route. Not much help, is it? We're just entering the city of Derby now. And while we're stuck in this traffic, I'll tell you a funny little story. Back in the days when policemen still went on point duty at crossroads, there was a television programme called Tomorrow's World. And one of the inventions that somebody come up with was a flashing blue light that went on the top of a policeman's helmet so that when he was on point duty, he showed up. Well, when I moved to the little village of Pattingham, I was chatting to a chap who had been a policeman in Derby and I told him about this story and he said that was me he, demonstrating it he said I didn't half feel a fool standing there with a blue flashing light on your head uh, uh, Monty was acting as my cameraman weren't you today and uh, he pressed the wrong button didn't you now, I know you're sorry. Anyway, we'll make up for it now. The, the reason that I went into Derby was to deal with a little bit of family history. Um, on my father's side, his mother, um, her father, had a foundry in Derby. And his father, father, had... A foundry in Derby. So it's my great great grandfather, both of them had foundries in Derby. And one of them was the Chartres foundry, and they made all sorts of different bits and pieces. And the other other foundry was called the Phoenix. And they made uh, kitchen ranges, you know, the things that you cook on in the old days. Yeah, and anyway, there's a street in Derby, uh, Duffield, Diffield, Driffield Street, I think, Diffield, Duffield, anyway, something like that. And along part of it, the, the pavement is quite high, and so they put posts and rails with a chain in between. Um, and every post, or the, the originals, have um, got the caster's name on it. Chartres, because they came from the Chartres foundry. And I think I've got the bit of video with the street showing it, and uh, a close-up of the casting itself. So we'll try and put that in after this. Alright, and you make sure you press the right buttons in the future, okay? Well, there's the street, and there's the Railings, you can just see them, and there's a close up of the top with my name in it, Chartres. If you're ever in the Derbyshire Dales or Peak District, this is another place that's well worth a visit. There's plenty going on here somewhere, I don't know where it is because I've never seen it, but there's a cable car goes across the valley. And on the other side of the valley, on somewhere up at the top over there, there's the Tramway Museum. I can remember back to my youth. My father brought me here and showed me the petrifying well. The water here is very hard, a lot of lime. And there's a, a little spring and the water has dripped 
onto various items that they put on display and they become covered in lime, petrified. I don't know whether, I, whether it's still here even. I'll try and find out. Gulliver's, uh, Gulliver's World here as well. And Jacob's Ladder. And right up to the top there. Oh, I'm going to have fish and chips in Charlie's. Uh, looks like an interesting place. Let's go inside. Thank you very much. Cheers. Are you Charlie? No, that's the name of the restaurant. Oh, right, okay. The, the, um, the restaurant is named the owner. Uh, their son, Gary Charles, played for Nottingham Forest in England. Oh, right. So it's named after Gary Charles. Right, okay. Oh, we've got my fish and chips and a half pint of John Smith's uh, good helping. Well, Charlie's fish and chips was good. Helping was far, far too big for me. And he did say that there's a petrifying thing placed up behind this pub, he thinks. That's typical, isn't it? Every time I get out, walk, it rains. It just started again now. Well the lady let me out the back of the pub here and here's the pond. It's not quite what I was expecting. It's got some beautiful large koi calf in it. Wonderful. And a, a lovely little waterfall running down there from the stream. Well, right next to the car park where Gwendolyn is, is this building here. And now the Peak District Lead Mining Museum. Where well, it obviously was the Grand Pavilion. It's now muddy boots and dogs are welcome in this little restoration cafe. I'm back in Bonsall. And I'm going to stay in the same place I did last night, because I like it. And Matlock Bath, in fact, is just over the hill from here, um, by road, just over two miles, because you have to go along the valley and then back up the other side. But before I go back to the parking place, I'm going to drive up through the village, past the pub, the King's Head, where I went yesterday, and take a look up that way. So here goes. Sorry about this, but there's a police car trying to overtake me. Good fun, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm only joking. I've come through the village and run up onto the top of the hills. And there's some stunning views from up here. But it's windy and cold. Well, that's about it for this video. Do you like those enough? Okay, and... Um, I've got a pub later on. Are you going to come with me? Yeah, uh, have a drink. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know you. I know you can't drink properly, but you can try, can't you? Anyway, tomorrow I'm off to uh, my sister Susan, and uh, I've got about seventy miles to go. Seventy miles. Okay, I don't know how many kilometres that is. Quite a few. One and a half times as many as 70. <laughs> All right, I'll work that out. Okay, say bye-bye. Bye-bye, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you daft bugger. Bye-bye. <laughs>